Cyclone threat increasing in the Bay of Bengal on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May the 7th. Still no storms that we're currently tracking, but more areas of disturbed weather are progressing across the Indian Ocean and we are code yellow for the Bay of Bengal for our potential next tropical cyclone, which the chances are slowly rising. Let's first look though at the Atlantic Ocean where it's 25 days until hurricane season begins. There's a few tornado warnings active right now at the time of broadcast it should be mentioned over the United States but across the Atlantic things are looking fairly calm and you can see a frontal system moving off across the central Atlantic towards the uh, eastern reaches. A quiet look in the Atlantic at the moment. Uh, Western Pacific, those two disturbances are still actually there, but they're not doing very much. And the one near Palawan now, now over the South China Sea properly, and it's uh, really just a naked swirl. We have a 60% chance now for the Bay of Bengal, and we were considering upping that a little bit further, but keeping it at that right now for this system that will run through possibly the Andaman Islands and then off towards the northern Bay of Bengal, and a 30% chance for the system in the southern half. Uh, south of the equator for all coming from this massive monsoonal mass uh, and you can see on the left hand side there as well another little disturbance there which the GFS is actually developing in the next five days a third storm uh, but no other models are on board with that and that's why we've not marked it at all as of yet Let's check the satellite imagery in the last 24 hours, look out for some of those red zones, mostly over the Indian Ocean, parts of India getting bits of it as well, also southern China too, a few red zones there showing torrential rainfalls occurring at various points during that time period, also in Indonesia as well, looks like they got a bit too. Here is the actual satellite imagery though in the last uh, few hours here and you can see just an enormous mess that's occurring across the eastern part of the Indian Ocean towards Indonesia, Sumatra particularly uh, going to be getting a lot of rainfall from this along the western coast. Also the Malay, Malay Peninsula probably going to get quite a bit of rain from this as well indirectly from these systems and you can see a little bit of a close up then looking at the whole equatorial region and you can see there's nothing really getting developed yet uh, but we're looking for those first signs of rotation uh, but nonetheless we ha also have Invest 91S this is the system on the southern side that 30% has now been marked and we have it on our Force 13 website floaters you can go to our website and see all of this for yourself uh, on the satellite pages and you can see how that's looking on this latest imagery bits of convection bobbing up and down uh, but no real rotation at all and so the we are you know still waiting for something to happen with that and it probably won't be for another two or three days yet just some other things to pick up on on the satellite on the radar imagery uh, over Taiwan over southern China a lot of rainfall occurring there big sheets of rain dropping down there Sea surface temperatures are continuing to improve across the eastern Pacific with temperatures reaching and possibly exceeding 30 degrees in parts of eastern Mexico. Further out to sea though, temperatures are quite a bit cooler, still got some catching up to do. Early season storms will have real trouble getting far out to sea. The Indian Ocean looks like this, extremely warm waters there, pushing above 32 degrees Celsius possibly near the Andaman Islands, which is why it's a big concern here for this potential cyclone, possibly tracking right over those waters. Southwest Indian Ocean is still gradually cooling down, fairly slowly now, uh, still holding on to 27 degrees Celsius waters over Mauritius and La Reunion, across the coast of Mozambique mostly as well, similar temperatures. Around Australia, temperatures degrading there as well. Temperatures close to around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, but we're, it's a far cry from what we we're looking at uh, about a few weeks ago when it was well above 30 across the board. And the South Pacific, temperatures receding to the west of New Caledonia, uh, but still warm enough temperatures around those islands of Fiji and Vanuatu. Western Pacific, really warm over 30 degrees Celsius in the Philippine Sea and even more than that in the uh, South China Sea there with extremely warm waters above 31. 
anomalies. Look at the large warm anomaly now in the North Indian Ocean. That's much bigger than it was just a week or two ago. So this really is coming together at a bad time for this potential cyclone, which will really take advantage of those waters. Warmer than usual in the South Pacific. And of course, the Eastern Pacific can't be ignored as well around the equatorial line. The oncoming El Nino looks like it's going to take place. The Eastern Atlantic also piping hot, especially towards the Iberian Peninsula. Oceanic heat content looks uh, still okay over various parts of the South Pacific. Doesn't reach New Caledonia at all anymore. It used to. Western Pacific is continuing to build in. Not much change, uh, but you can see West, uh, the Philippine Sea looking very good. Eastern Pacific also got a fair amount of good conditions there. Much better than what we were looking at last year. So, GFS next five days showing up three tropical cyclones now on its latest run the two that we already know about and the third one down towards the bottom left there in the south indian ocean so that would be a sight to see but no other models are on board with that yet so we haven't given it any chances of formation however look at the other two gfs really confident on both of those really forming the northern one has got more model backing the southern one not so much but gfs wants them to both become powerful cyclones and the southern one curving away quite quickly uh, before reaching Indonesia. It's trended slightly westwards in the last uh, update, as has the northern system as well. You saw that there, it was bending through the Andaman Islands towards the western coast of um, of Myanmar once again. And this is the rainfall expectations again over the next seven days. And you can see just the amount of rainfall we're looking at there, some very high amounts still on that forecast. Given that rain has already affected Indonesia, the coast of Sumatra, we could still see another 19 inches on top of the current falls. That's quite close to 500 millimeters. And above that, over parts of the Andaman Islands there, currently forecasting now 23 inches of rain, which is nearly 600 millimeters and continuing up the coast of Myanmar once again which puts it back in line with some of the earlier model runs rather than the one that we were looking at last night which took it much further east. In the long range then and this makes for difficult viewing if you're local to these areas because it's an extremely powerful cyclone that's being depicted by the GFS today it is calling for a 914 millibar peak which is not far from a record in the basin as a matter of fact so that looks like a category 5 on the forecast from the GFS other models aren't quite there yet but it looks pretty it's getting clearer that we're going to see some kind of significant cyclone by the looks of things in the Indian Ocean. Uh, but where will it make landfall? That's a big, big question mark right now. Back to those shenanigans in the southern Indian Ocean, those two systems and a tiny uh, southwestern Indian Ocean cyclone. If that pulls itself off, then uh, I'd be amazed. But that other one in the southeastern region there as well uh, starts to run out of steam towards the end of that 10-day period, towards the 17th of May. We don't get to look at it in the long range, so I'll tell you what happens to it next. It starts to move further south and then eventually maybe a little bit southeastwards and doesn't really recover from what happens there at the end. You can uh, scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our items, all kinds of things there. And uh, me looking a little bit more trim in those images than I do today. And they're still waiting for Hone t-shirt, as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. In the silly range then, in the next uh, 10 to 16 days, we're looking back at the Western Pacific for potential activity and the GFS does not disappoint. It throws up two systems there, one in the far reaches of the uh, Pacific Ocean there, not far from the equator at first, and then another system popping up in the South China Sea and possibly reaching the Philippines, the northern part of Luzon, from the west, which is less common, um, but still does happen. And you can see both of them there impacting the western system, impacting the coast. Now other system probably over eastern Micronesia. Um, so interesting goings on there, but it's quite a long way out. You can talk about all of that as well as anything else on your mind on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical and general weather chat with over 3,000 weather watchers from around the world. Well, on this day, it was May 7th, 2011, when we had Tropical Storm Airy, which was moving across the uh, southern part of Luzon in the Philippines. A very broad system. It had a 
decent compact core as it was about to reach those islands there, the southern peninsula of Luzon. It was moving northeastwards, so this was after it, uh, that picture was after it uh, moved along the coast. Um, and an interesting picture there, a storm that got some moderate tropical storm status as it moved through there and certainly quite a large broad pattern on it. Interesting. And it's been 12 years since then, in case you wanted to feel old today. The next name, the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Arlene, the Eastern Pacific, Adrian and the Central Pacific, it's Hone still. In the Western Pacific, could our 17th storm of the year be Mawa? Probably not, it's more likely to be Mocha, which is the next name in the North Indian Ocean. And of course, that 60% system would get that name if it does indeed develop. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the next name on their list still is Jasper, uh, is Fabian, sorry. Australian region is Jasper, got confused there. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again on Monday night.